Hi, welcome to another retro repair. Before we get things going, I'm just going to make sure that you are within the required distance of six foot. Here we go. So, time has come for me to look at a Commodore 64. Uh, I've got a couple of things to look at. There's this one that I brought, complete with the tape drive and power supply. Then I have a system that I brought a long time ago for next to nothing and I did something really bad to it which I'm going to fix and we have a, a board that I brought which was sold as, as working but it doesn't have a SID or a PLA and I've got a replacement PLA and I have a, a, a nano swing SID that we can try out but hopefully we've got another board that I can use to take some spares off to fix both of them. So my goal by the end of this is to have two Commodore 64C systems working and we also have a power supply that I've made myself so that we don't have to use the one that came with it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at this Commodore 64 which was brought untested. I don't know what's wrong with it. Uh, I remember that the picture showed something wrong with graphics. To test this we are going to use a dead test cartridge that I bought from the future was 8-bit so we'll plug this in and we'll see what it shows us okay this is the system that I brought sold as untested and I got the 64C the tape drive and power supply and it, it was around about 50 pound much like all the other ones that I've brought in my previous repairs on top of this I brought a new lead which has got composite and S video and that's from Retro Computer Shack I brought the SD to IEC adapter and then we can instantly get some testing going I didn't want to use this power supply so after much research I found a couple of designs and a couple of people that have made their own and I saw the video by Jan Bita and look what he did and then I also did some more searching and I found a guy on Twitter called Sven Peterson and he is an actual engineer he has been doing this for a long time and he's designed a couple of Commodore power supplies one of them being this board that I have here which I will make up at some point but based on what I found, we needed to have 9 volt AC, 5 volt DC. So I made this circuit board, which was based on the IRM105 transformer and, uh, and a 9 volt AC transformer. So AC comes in, goes to that, 9 volt AC comes out, 5 volt comes out of there. We then have the required capacitors for smoothing and decoupling for that and a fuse on there. I built that up and then just designed this big chunky box and 3D printed it so we have the required power lead on the end and some strain relief and then an IEC with a switch on there. So we now have um, the Commodore, we have a dead test We've got the video lead and we have a, a good power supply. So I feel happy that we can switch this on and do some testing and see what actually happens with it. The one thing I noticed is that the switch doesn't feel particularly good. So I think that needs looking at. But anyway, let's power this one on. Yeah, so that power switch is really sensitive. But at least it does come on. So we're definitely going to have to change that power switch. So I, I kind of need to finesse it into place. So we'll leave that as it is. 
and we can turn on and off with this one but we've got a picture so that's a good start so the machine is working um, so let's run the dead test and see what it tells us Okay, it's gone through the first set of tests, so it didn't find anything too serious. Zero pages, okay. Stack pages, okay. And now it's checking screen RAM. Screen RAM is okay, but color RAM is bad, and it says U10 bad so I guess the first thing we need to do is replace the chip at U10 so we'll get set up on the workbench and we will take a look at that so let's have a look at the other board that I've got so it's running through the dead tests and that seems okay, so there's no major faults. So let's let that run through its tests and see what it reports back. Okay, the RAM, screen RAM is good. I presume this is okay, I've never run this before. Sound is okay as well, and all the other tests have passed and it's running a second loop. So this board is actually good and those two chips that I've took off that other board are actually working. Uh, so that's one good thing. So we do have a, a working board here that we can use to restore the second one. But what we can do is we can take the, the RAM chips off this one and um, swap them over to the one with the faulty RAM, put sockets on and test those and see how they go so I think that's the first thing that I'm going to do is remove these two chips and then put sockets on the other board okay we're on the workbench and I just noticed that the the board that we just looked at the two RAM chips are actually in sockets on that board so we can take these two out and we can test them on that before we look at the board that's got the faulty one on. So let's take these two out. Now we want to get these out in one piece, but I'm not too worried about the, the damage in the board at all. Um, so we've got uh, flux, we've got solder braid, got the Duratool desoldering station. So let's try and get this out with as little fuss as possible. Okay, we are over back on the test bench again and this is that same board that we were just using before. So we'll just ease out those chips and these are NEC branded chips. Uh, so I'm, I'm literally swapping over the same type of chips. The dead test cartridge is in. Let's switch it on and see if these RAM chips are any good. Mm -hmm. 
so that looks good. So we know that we've got two good working RAM chips now, so we need to take U10 off that motherboard, put a socket on and try one of these chips. Okay, we're back at the workbench and I've already had this apart, so let's just get rid of the top. There's quite a lot of dirt in the top and also underneath. I already moved the, the cardboard silver foil off the top and we can see there's quite a few blotches where it's actually saved things from going through. Keyboard looks like it needs a good clean but then literally every system that I've worked on so far the keyboard has been the biggest job. But the board itself doesn't look too bad. This board's pretty clean. There's a bit of flux and whatnot just there. And around there, so on the larger connections. But we'll give it a proper scrub anyway but for the moment let's get that chip out so we want to remove u10 this time it's an oaky chip and this time we're not bothered about the chip but we definitely want to um, not lift any pads or any traces Okay, so there we have our socket for our RAM. So let's put it back over on the workbench and pop one of those chips in and see if it passes the test this time. Power. Switch on. Rebooting again, that's good. No, U10 is still bad. Let's try, uh, try the other chip. Okay, so it, it it's not the RAM. Uh, so I'll have to look at uh, some more testing to see what could be causing U10 to show up as being bad. So uh, I've been doing some research, and also I've been I've been pulling parts off the spare board that I've got and um, we also have this good working board so that I can use it to test parts and the sections that we're looking at it's giving us U10 as the error but the actual error is colour RAM so 
The color RAM is related to this Sanyo chip just here. Possibly this multiplexer 4066 or the PLA. My first step was to check U10 and U11 because that was what dead test told us to do and I removed them from the board, did an inspection, looked for any sign of damage, put sockets on. Then took the chips off this board which is already has sockets on and swapped them around, tested the chips in the good board and those tip, two chips work okay. Put two other chips that are were known good back into this board and they tested okay. So that made me think that there was nothing wrong with those two chips, even though we get the error is at U10. So let's run the Diag again, and I'll, I want to show you something that I found. So I'm going to switch it on. We'll let the Diag boot up as normal the first time. And it looks okay. But every now and again, I noticed that there would be dim points on those characters. And also on the Z and the E, those characters would be slightly dimmer than normal. So as normal, screen RAM is okay, color RAM is bad. So it says U10. It says bad at U10, or is it U22? I'm not really sure. But anyway, colour RAM, bad. So I assumed that that was U10. But now, if rather than turning it on with the dead test, we hit reset on the dead test itself, we can see that we've got these dots, these points that are brighter, and it's like repeating every 16 points on the screen. So that's, that's basically the error that we've got with the colour RAM. So these are the two SRAM chips. This is the combined PLA on this um, 250469 revision board. And then we have this Sanyo chip, which is the color RAM, as far as I could find. If I looked at the schematic, that was what was dealing with the color RAM. And you can see that uh, these two RAMs and the color RAM are now in sockets and I removed the chip out and I removed another color RAM chip from my donor board that we've got. So let's put that one in to this board and run the test again. So that's the color RAM that I took off my donor board. So let's run the dead test again. So no, no bad colors on the screen. The screen colors look okay. Screen RAM is okay, so that's great, we've made some progress. Alright, RAM test is good, colour RAM is okay, but no, no sound from the SID. So the SID is actually bad, and I've put it into my other board that works. And indeed, that SID is bad. So I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in a nano SID. So let's put that in and test again. So there we can see the nano SID in the board. And we've got sound. Okay, so we fixed the problems that are shown from the dead test cart, which was U19 and the SID chip. I've got a cap kit that we're going to do on this board as well. And um, I won't show you this, this hundreds of videos showing how to do cap kits and this hundreds of videos showing how to remove chips from the board uh, so I don't really see 
why I should just repeat the same stuff again but um, I will do that and then we'll come back and we'll just do a bit more testing I don't have a harness so we'll have to load up some games and uh, test the joystick ports I've got the tape so we can test the tape drive as well but we've made some good progress colour RAM is now sorted and we've got sound from the SID so I've just connected up the keyboard and I've plugged in my SD2i EC let's let's run the test that is required when fixing any Commodore Especially when we're doing sound related fixes, seeing as I've replaced the SID. Notice how it sounds slower because it's on the PAL Commodore. Okay. So that's a good test anyway. I don't have enough experience to know that that doesn't sound like it should do. I guess we could connect up the Commodore that I've got with the real SID and do a side by side comparison later on. But let's get back to doing the cap kit. All right, cleaned up the top part. Keys have been ultrasonic and individually scrubbed. I'm uh, having to use the keyboard that I wrecked, so I made new connections. So uh, let's go into um, montage, putting the keys back on, and then we'll carry on putting the system back together. nice and clean let's compare it to the other one so this one definitely needs a retro bright and that one looks nice now so let's carry on putting everything back into the case all right so we've got our case which gave a nice clean it wasn't too bad there was some dirt in the grills and around the edge and clean the bottom up as well so I'm going to put the nice board in with the original SID in this one So that, that looks pretty nice, I have to say. That's came, that came out really nice. The keys aren't yellowed, I uh, checked underneath. So let's plug this back in and make sure everything still works. So over, overall, I'm really happy that this one is working. So this one had the board that I brought they didn't have the SID or the VIC so I've put those in from my parts board I'm 
then we have the board that I repaired today which has got the Nano SID in there so I'm going to put that one in the other case that I butchered and I'll show you what I did on that okay we've seen the other Commodore 64 that I've got working and cleaned it all up so this is the keyboard that was left which is yellowed and I want to show you something that I'm not particularly proud of so if we look inside this case we can see that it doesn't have a board inside it has a Raspberry Pi with some glued in feet mount and a USB port on the back and then I used a Teensy to make a keyboard interface so that I could use the Commodore keyboard to control and talk to the Raspberry Pi and that's not even the worst bit the worst bit is that I took the board admittedly that was sold as beyond repair and I cut the end off so that I could use the joystick ports on the side and link them in um, yeah I don't know if I could have repaired this board at the time I couldn't but now maybe I do know that the SID and the VIC worked because I've used them to get the other board working so and I've also pulled off um, the SRAM and the color RAM so I've used many parts of this board to get the other one working and I'll probably continue to do that so I'm not sure what part was dead on this it definitely didn't work when I first got it so now we have to make amends so this is the the board that I took out of the other one which had the color RAM fault and the faulty SID so I'm going to put this one back into this case and then I'll be keeping this one for myself so I'm not too worried about the case being damaged and the colours being yellowed um, and that it hasn't got a proper sit in that'll be fine for me so we need to get these parts out I've printed some new keyboard supports and uh, let's get this back up working as a Commodore so let's see if these feet will come off so that was really easy to do uh, you just use the Arduino keyboard library and then have a, a list of the keys and you program the Teensy to work as a keyboard HID device and you can plug that into anything and it will just work as a keyboard so I was able to use an original Commodore keyboard on Cambion which is a, a, a really fast booting Commodore emulator and it would start up and it would look just like a Commodore it was really good so my biggest worry on this is that I've glued these 3D printed parts in how easy is it to get them out and I also enlarged this hole for the USB port so I made that a bit bigger um, right so I don't want to pull the plastic off on these they're not coming off Well, 
Why did I have to be so foolish? One down. So that gives me hope that we can get the others off. Okay, we can scrape at that. I can live with that. So let's just give that a quick wipe down. So like I say, I'm not too worried about this one being nice. This one's just for me. Kidoki. So now we have our repaired board. Can go in there. That doesn't. Now he's got it, it goes underneath the board. Oops. So that one goes on there and then we'll put this longer screw in that one. That's better. Okay. That's me being stupid. Stupid. So we need to find some screws to go in there, but I'm sure I know I've got those. I need to put on a new crimp for the power LED because I wrecked that. Luckily, we've still got the clips on the back of the case. Uh, so, without too much hassle, I've got another 64, which I'll be keeping for myself. So this case is definitely a lot more battered and not so nice. Needs a retro bright, but I'm not going to be doing that for a while. So really, it's just the keys that need looking at. I might try some baking powder to get those marks out. Let's do the Let's do a new crimp on the LED. So we've got my engineer tool. And then you just slide those in and they click in. So 
so there we go there is our second system uh, let's get this set up and just make sure that everything still works I mean, we know the board works and we know the keyboard works so, uh, let's just switch it on and give it a test this is the second one that we've just put back into the case after removing all the Raspberry Pi stuff and we've just got it set back up on the, the TV with the SD to IEC on my power supply that I made so I replaced the switch on this board and we replaced the color RAM and we replaced the SID using parts from the donor board and as we can see it's all working so I won't be showing you any work on cleaning this one up we've seen it before on the previous one uh, so really that's it for the Commodore I've got the tape drive which I need to look at I have belts for that so we can do that but again I've done tape drives before so we did the one um, on the Atari and we did the WH Smith's one so I don't see the point in doing that again so really I think I think that is it for the two Commodores that I've got um, so we've got two one of them is really really nice with all original parts and this one has got reproduction nano SID I need to get uh, another power supply and uh, then I'll be looking to sell the nice one and then I'll keep this one for myself I'm not too worried that it's not so dirty and uh, that's it so um, this one shouldn't be too long I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, I'm looking forward to playing on the Commodore 64 thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon